I would be once again completely remiss if I just left you guys hanging and didn't really put this together as, as a comparison between mitosis and meiosis. You know, what, I've been teaching a few years, and, and you know, one of the things that, that um, I, I, I've really tried to puzzle through is, is how to get around the confusion you guys are feeling about mitosis and meiosis. And so I'm gonna make up a little list here, and then we're gonna, we're gonna kinda image mitosis and meiosis and take a look at that list and make sure you got the comparison down. And if you can do this comparison, then you're gonna be okay for mitosis and meiosis. All right, here's the things I wanna talk about, right? Number one, I wanna talk about DNA replicate. Well, good start, I spelled DNA wrong. Okay, DNA replication. Okay, we wanna talk about that. Okay, I'm not gonna give away any answers yet. Two, we wanna look at the number of divisions in mitosis versus meiosis. Number three, we wanna look at this idea of synapsis. Number four, we wanna look at the idea of the number of daughter cells that we get. See, nice little rogues gallery of, of, of things that may or may not be different. Number five, we wanna look at the chromosome number of the products. And number six, we wanna look at function. And just because I put that number six does not, does not mean it's the, it's, it's the least important. In fact, in many ways, it's where you should be beginning your comparison. Because remember why you do meiosis, to make gametes. Meiosis, gametes, mitosis, everything else, okay? Meiosis, gametes, mitosis, everything else. So if you get into, you can even forget the mitosis, everything else, just remember meiosis, gametes, and the rest kind of falls into place. Because the key is, if you know that you're making gametes and you know that gametes are sex cells, then it's logical to remember that there better be half the number of chromosomes. And so this whole idea of meiotic division comes out, ha, huh, the purpose is to get to one half while keeping my chromosomal integrity, so to speak, and making sure that I have a full set of genes in one daughter cell and a full set of genes in the other. That's what it's all about. Let's see if I can save this without destroying too much here, and we'll come back to it. Now let's see. Ah, I'll just rewrite it. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now, let's, there's, there's a cell. Okay, now I've, I've, I've kind of shown you the, the chromosomes in, in, in a, in a non-native way in the sense that I want you to imagine that there's enough DNA sitting in the cell right now before mitosis to have the equivalent of four chromosomes or before my, meiosis. In other words, the DNA hasn't replicated. I wanna take you through the first step and I wanna take a look at what's gonna happen with this cell as we go through my, which one, look, my, Mitosis. Okay, let's take a look at mitosis of this cell. All right, first thing that happens is it doubles. Okay, is that any different than meiosis? Let's see. I happen to have meiosis right here. Same cell, and the first thing that happens is it doubles. So for our first thing we're worrying about, DNA replication, number one, yes to both. Yes to both, okay? It happens in mitosis, check, and it happens in meiosis, check. DNA replicates. Okay, all righty. What happens, what's the second thing? The number of divisions, we'll get to that, that's at the end. Let's take a look at what happens next. In mitosis, we see no rhyme or reason in prophase. The chromosomes are simply doubled. Hmm? They're all over the place. Then in meiosis, a very important thing happens. We get synapsis. In other words, we get the chromosomes coming together in homologous pairs, all right? So, so indeed, we have in, in meiosis, and our question about synapsis, in mitosis, no, but in meiosis, yes. Very important, the single most important event of meiotic prophase. All right, well, let's see what happens next. Now we're gonna see that indeed we get a metaphase, but our metaphase in mitosis is gonna be different than our metaphase, mitosis is gonna be different than meiosis. If you look at the mitotic metaphase, look at these four chromosomes. One, two, three, four, 
all lined up on the equator, whereas here, the homologous pairs line up. What are homologous pairs? Remember, homologous pairs are chromosomes that are going to control the same traits. Or to say it another way, they control genes that are going to, or they contain genes that are going to control the same traits. So here, we have this idea of the metaphase is the same in the sense that you indeed line up your chromosomes, but here you line them up in a single file, here you line them up in a double file. Okay, how important is that? It's very important in the sense that let's go to the end the, or the, the, the next phase in mitosis where we're going to be done. We're going to go through anaphase and telophase. And when we get to telophase, look what we have. I'm going to do a comparison here. I'm going to move this. Here was my original cell. There are my two daughter cells. What do you notice? Well, what you notice is the two daughter cells identical to the cell we started with. Okay? So, we're done with mitosis, but we're not done with meiosis. Why not? Because even though we split and just line them side by side, there's a first division here, you'll notice that because we added this, this, this step where we had to separate the homologs, we are now at a step where we've separated the homologs, but the chromosomes are still doubled. And they're very much like they were up in the top of mitosis except now the, they're still doubled, so we have to put them through still one more division. And so we're gonna go through, I didn't illustrate for you all the phases, the, pro, the prophase two, the metaphase two, the anaphase two, and the telophase two, but you know what? If you look right here, there's my final products of meiosis. Let's compare them to the final products of mitosis and to my original cell. Indeed, they're different. Indeed, whereas my original cell had four chromosomes, the my meiotic products each have two. I've shown you a little crossing over there because we don't want to neglect that, but the bottom line is there's a difference in chromosome number. So you got all this? Let's do our little comparison chart, which I promised you guys I would write again. All right. Let's go to DNA replications. DNA replications. We'll do mitosis. Meiosis. DNA replication, yep, to both. Number of divisions. In mitosis, one. In meiosis, two. Synapsis. The moving of homologous pairs together. Mitosis, no. Meiosis, you bet. Yes. Okay. The number of daughter cells. Mitosis, two. Meiosis, four. Hmm. But what about the chromosome number? The chromosome number, I'm going to use ends and two ends here. In meiosis, we have the basis, N, but in mitosis, we have the same number as the parent cell, 2N. And last but not least, last but definitely not least, function. Function, mitosis, somatic cells, skin cells, liver cells, brain cells, bone cells, blood cells, everything except gametes. What's so special about gametes? What have you accomplished by meiosis? You've accomplished this, this feat. You have made sure that each of your cells has half the num normal number of chromosomes, and yet you can have a paternal half and a maternal half so that when fertilization occurs, you have the offspring with a full set of chromosomes. It literally is crucial to sexual reproduction.